Hi everyone, this is Sultan with Rex Theme, and in this video, I'll show you how you can generate a WooCommerce product feed for the Rakuten marketplace. So let's get started. Rakuten is one of the largest marketplaces out there, and it's a pretty big brand that we all know of. Now, their e-commerce marketplace is pretty popular and has over a billion active users, which means that you can easily promote your e-commerce products and get a lot of traction by uploading your products to the Rakuten marketplace, okay? In this video, what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how you can generate a product feed with all of your e-commerce products that has the right uh, product attributes which you need to upload your products to the Rakuten marketplace once you're signed up as a merchant, okay? So to do that, we are gonna use our plugin WooCommerce Product Feed Manager, all right? And the best part is the plugin already has a default template for this, but still I'm gonna give you a short explanation of the things you need to upload your products to Rakuten before I start with the plugin and show you how you can generate the feed. Now, what you're looking at here is a list of all the attributes that you need to submit to Rakuten uh, for your feed to be accepted. So initially I'm just gonna explain the required product attributes and later on you can read this guide to see what other extra attributes you may submit uh, when you generate the feed, okay? Uh, so I'll put a link to this guide in the description of the video, all right? So let me just explain the required product attributes which you must submit with all of your products, okay? So initially this is the ID which is basically the product ID. Uh, then comes the title which is the title of your product. Uh, then it's the brand name. If you are the manufacturer, then you just cannot be the name of your company. Or if you're selling a product from some other brand, you can mention that brand with the brand name, all right? Then comes the description of the product. Make a good description of the product itself. Don't need to make it too much promotional uh, as Rakuten doesn't uh, like that. What you need to do is you need to create a description that describes the main features of the product, okay? Then comes Google product category. Rakuten actually follows the category structure same as Google Shopping Marketplace, all right? Uh, so they follow the same category path that you will find uh, with Google product category. So you need to submit which Google product category your Rakuten product might fall under, all right? Uh, then comes the link of the product, the image link, you need to submit at least one image of your product. Uh, then is the price of the product. Here you need to submit the price along with the currency that you represent in your website. Uh, then comes availability, if your product is available or not. Then there are two unique identifiers that you need to submit, which is the GTIN and the MPN. You should get that with your, with your product and this should be unique for all the products, including product variants, okay? Uh, then comes the condition of the product. We always advise that you upload new products to Rakuten, uh, but you do have the option to sell refurbished or used products there, okay? Uh, then comes the gender, the age group, uh, these two are mandatory fields for any products. You need to mention who are this for, what age group can uh, use this. So basically they have two age groups, which is adult and kids. So if the product is for kids, you mention it as kids. If it's for adults, you mention it as adult. And as for the gender, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. It's either for males, females, or unisex. Uh, next, there's two more attributes, which is the product type. This is basically the uh, product category of your store, okay? Uh, and the item group ID. Basically, if you have a variable product, each variant should have a common item group ID to indicate that these are variants of the same product, all right? Now, other than this required attributes, there are many other conditional and optional attributes which you sometimes need to submit, sometimes you don't, or sometimes you can choose if you want to add them or not. Uh, just go through this guide uh, and you'll get to know about those, but initially, you just need uh, this required attributes to submit your products to Rakuten Advertising, all right? So in this video, I'm just gonna show you how you can generate a feed with the required attributes. And later on, you can uh, learn to add the extra attributes if you want to, okay? Uh, so let me just go ahead and uh, show you how I'm gonna generate this product feed using our plugin, uh, Product Feed Manager for WooCommerce. So as you can see, I'm on my dashboard and I already have the plugin installed and activated. Once you have Product Feed Manager from Commerce, you'll see this menu on your dashboard menus, all right? So the first thing to do is to enable Rakuten as the marketplace. So go to settings. And here, go to the merchants tab. So 
So in this tab, you'll see you have all the merchants that we support with our plugin listed in one place. So what you need to do here is you need to look for Rakuten advertising in this list. So to do so, so what you can do is you can use Command F if you're using Mac or Control F if you're using a PC and search for Rakuten, okay? And look for the name Rakuten advertising. When you find that, you just enable this, okay? And your Rakuten advertising merchant is enabled. Now go up and click on controls and here click on purge cache. And once this is done, you're ready to generate your feed uh, for Rakuten advertising. So first thing to do is go to add new feed and this will take you to a blank uh, product feed creation page. So initially give a name to it. I'm just gonna name it Rakuten advertising feed okay so first you need to choose what products to include so here initially it's going to say all published products which means all your products will be included to the feed or if you want to filter out some of them you can click over here and choose one of the filter options okay uh, next comes the refresh intervals this is basically uh, if you want the feed to be updated on certain intervals after you made any changes to your product descriptions or product information in your store okay now the rest of the information here are uh, already configured properly you don't need to worry about this okay you just leave them as is and the feed will be generated properly okay now scroll down to the feed configuration section and here you can see you have the option to choose the merchant type so click on the option here and look at the very bottom you'll see there is rakuten advertising so click on it and once you click on it, you'll see that a lot of attributes have been loaded below. But before I go there first, change the file format to CSV. Now Rakuten uh, mainly accepts CSV. You do have the option to submit text view or XML, but it's ideal that you submit a product feed in CSV format, okay? So that's what I'm gonna show you now. Now, uh, let me scroll down and show you. These are all the required attributes that I just explained a bit earlier that you needed to submit uh, with your product data when you sub upload your products to Rakuten, okay? You can see these are all the product attributes I mentioned, the product ID, the title, the brand, the description, and all the other required product attributes. So this is basically a Rakuten advertisement feed template, okay, that we have with our plugin. You just choose the merchant type as Rakuten and they're already there. And you can see that most of them are already configured except a few which you need to configure on your own depending on how you save the data all right so let me just go over those initially you need to assign a brand name so uh, if you are the manufacturer so what you can do is you can change the type into static and here you can just give your company name as the brand name okay and uh, if you have some other brand uh, for your products in, the, in that case, you need to save that brand name in a custom field uh, or assign it as an attribute to your products, okay? In that case, you should rather choose the type as attribute and then choose uh, the name of the field in which you save the uh, brand name for all of your products in your WooCommerce store, okay? Now, WooCommerce by default does not come with fields such as brand or GT or MPN. Now in our plugin, we have come up with an option so that you get to add those custom fields to all of your products, including product variants. Uh, in that case, what you can do is you can simply use those custom fields to save the GT, MPN and the brands, and then use them uh, as the values in the feed, okay? So I have explained that in another video where I explained how you can enable uh, the custom fields from our plugin and then use them in the feed, okay? So I'll add a link to the description below if you want to know how to use that, right? So as you can see, I've assigned a static value to brand. Next is the GTN and MPN is same as the brand. You either need to save them in a custom field or assign them as product attributes. But the problem is that if you assign them as product attributes, they might not work for variable products. As a result, custom field is the best option and our plugin comes with the custom fields. So do watch that video that I'm gonna add in the description so that you know how to use that, okay? Now for the GTN, I have saved the GTN in one of our custom fields. As a result, I'm gonna assign that value, uh, which is called WPFM product GTN. Now for the MPN, if you don't have the MPN available, you can use the product SKU 
as the value for the NPM. Okay. So now, uh, if you scroll down, there are two other options, which is the gender and the age group. In this case, if you want to mention the gender and the age group, if all of your products are for the same gender, uh, you can always uh, change it to static and mention the gender name, which can be male, female, or unisex. But if you have fixed genders for each of your products, then it's best to assign them as attributes to your products uh, and then add, use them here. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to choose male uh, for all my products. And for the age group, it goes the same way as the gender. If it's for adults, uh, you can assign adult here. If it's for kids, you can assign kids. So if you have products for both, then you should add them as attributes to the product. But if you have all your products just for adults or just for kids, then just use a static value. So I'm just gonna uh, change it to adult. So that's it. Now I've configured this. Uh, now still there is one attribute left to be configured, which is the Google product category. Now uh, for this, what you need to do is you need to use a category mapping option uh, to configure this. I'll show it to you in a bit, okay? So initially, once you've configured everything else except the Google product category, what you can do is you can go ahead and publish this for the time being. So I'm just going to do that. And you can see once I click on publish, it's generating. And once this will be generated, it will give me the option to download the feed. Now, since this is a CSV feed, I don't have the option to view it on the browser. So if I want to view it, I need to download it and view it using a CSV viewer. Okay, so uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you how you can use the category mapping. What you need to do is you need to go to this menu, which is called the category mapping. And once you go there, you'll see that all the categories in your store is listed here. Okay, what you need to do is you need to look for matching categories on Google product categories. So let me just uh, look for arts and crafts. So I just search for arts. And you can see I have the option arts and entertainment. I need to look for the things that matches this uh, category and choose one. So let's say uh, I want to choose this one, arts and entertainment, hobbies and creative arts. So let's say all my products in the arts and crafts category falls under this category according to Google. Now, since I'm preparing this for Rakuten advertising, I only need to submit the categories, not the IDs. So once this appears, just select the ID and remove the ID. So in the same way, assign the rest of the categories here. Okay. So once you have removed the ID, you'll still get a suggestion sometimes, but don't choose that. Okay. Uh, just click on anywhere over here and the suggestions will be gone. All right. So now you have to do the same and save the categories over here. Okay. For the rest of the attributes. And once you're done assigning it for all of your attributes, uh, you can just name it. and then scroll down and save it, okay? Now, once you save this, uh, this will be saved at the top right here, okay? You can see I've created a few more earlier. Uh, so if you click on this, this will expand. You can edit it anytime you want, okay? So now once you have the category mapping set up, what you do is go back to the feed that you are creating. So you can just go to all product feeds, look for the feed that you're creating, which is this one, and edit it and once you're on the feed okay you can see everything is configured uh, just like I left it earlier and uh, all that's missing is the Google product category so before assigning this what you do is scroll up and click on purge cache and once you purge cache now go to the Google product category and on the value field click on it and scroll to the very bottom and there you'll see of the option that you just created, which is the Rakuten cat. So if I click on this, this is a sign. And now if I update the feed, my feed will be generated. And now I can download this and view it using a CSV viewer, okay? So that's it. That's how easily you can generate a product feed for Rakuten advertising. Now let me try to show you how it looks like when you open it with a CSV viewer. Let me just download it first. Uh, now, uh, let me move on to a spreadsheet that I have, which is at Zoho Sheets. Uh, Zoho is pretty good. You can try using it. Uh, I'll click on File and I'll click on Import. And here, uh, I can just choose my file that I just downloaded. 
on the downloads and open okay so now this this is a comma separator so i'll just choose the delimiter as comma i'll click on next and i'll use a replace current shape and there you go so once you import it you'll see all the data has appeared the same way as i did now you can see the gtn and mpn field is empty because i didn't save those values for my products yet as this is just a test server and i'm using dummy products but when, once you have real products you do need to have those values uh, saved over here okay and you can see i assigned static values for gender and age group and all of them has the same value all right now one thing i'll point out is that these descriptions have the uh, html tags normally rakuten doesn't accept html tags in that case what you need to do is in the feed you need to use an option called strip tags let me just show you real quick uh, so if you go to this section for the product description this is the option for sanitization just click on this and uh, choose remove short codes and strip tags right so now when you generate the feed uh, all the html tags and short codes from your product descriptions will be removed all right so that's it that's how easily you can generate a product feed for Rakuten advertising and the next thing to do is take this feed and upload it to your merchant account in Rakuten and start getting more sales all right so that's it for this video thank you for watching i'll see you in one of my future videos take care